You guys have done really interesting work in terms of field work where you've gone and uh, looked at like very well-known traditional musicians but then looked at their families and traced the music through their families. Often these really very famous traditional musicians, the families don't get a lot of credit after the musician passes. Yeah. And also the music is often passed matrilineally. A lot of folk and Appalachian music pa is passed by mothers and passed through families. And you've done work that I've never seen anyone do before in that field. What brought you to that? And also, do you feel that the, the women have been kind of discredited in the way the music has passed through the centuries? Well, women are usually discredited as a blanket statement. But Big <laughs> topic. <laughs> but we won't address, we can't, we don't have time for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we try to meet as many of the families of these singers as we can. Um, on one hand, creatively, who better than the granddaughter of a singer you like to help you realize that you don't have to sound like her grandmother. You know, like you're sta sitting there in front of someone and they're like telling you about their grandmother and you're like, here's the song. They're not like, oh, you know, it really doesn't sound, like they already know you're not their grandmother. Like <laughs> it's very evident to them. And I think just from a creative standpoint, as you're trying to learn this music of these people who are past and you're trying to sort out what is your voice and what is their voice, I think the family has been really helpful to, to sort that out because they can kind of give you a sort of permission to be yourself within this music that, that it's hard to get from a recording or from another academic person. And I think it's also because we're going to the families, we're kind of, yeah, we're trying to honor them and say, hey, your family has made this song possible to be alive in 2017, thank you. And, um, and in that asking, in that thanks, we're also asking, hey, can I be the custodian of a public, can I be a public custodian of your family heirlooms? Because I am very moved by them and I think other people will be. Um, and to me, it's, to me, that's important that, um, that we get the permission because we are carrying around other people's family heirlooms and, and there's like a publicness to it. Like it's, we think of, oh, it's folk music, it's music for everyone and it totally is. But I think there's also like that thing of like, you know, s there's a spectrum of how private or public some families are and, and it feels like if, if what our thing is, is to go around and talk about other people, um, 
our dad is a, a journalist, so I feel like also just kind of what is the code of ethics of sharing other people's music, and I feel like relating to the family is a way of kind of um, asking them what, like, well, what do you think? What's fair to you? Let's hear it one more time for Anna and Elizabeth. Thank you guys so much.